Have you ever walked past a dry riverbed, a rocky trail, or a patch of untouched hillside, never realizing that beneath your boots lay a hidden treasure that could change your life forever? Because if you knew exactly where to dig first, you'd realize nature actually leaves us clues, not loud, not obvious, but precise signs carved by geology and time, waiting for someone observant enough to notice. Today, you're going to learn that trick, the single smartest place to dig first when hunting for real natural gemstones and what to look for when you get there. Because the ground may look ordinary until it doesn't. Let's start where gravity always wins. Downhill. Gemstones are heavier than the average rock, much heavier. And over time, water, erosion, and landslides drag heavier materials downward. If you're on a sloped terrain, especially one with exposed soil or scattered pebbles, don't look at the peak. Look at the base. The lowest point of the slope acts like a natural trap. It collects dense material, including rough garnets, tourmalines, even small sapphires, especially after heavy rains. Runoff will often expose new minerals after storms. When the mud dries, sparkling fragments may stick to clay, waiting to be pulled free. And here's the kicker. Most beginners walk uphill, but seasoned gem hunters start at the base. That's where nature deposits her weighty secrets. You don't always need to dig deep. In fact, in the right environment, digging first is a mistake. Before breaking ground, learn to spot surface shimmer, what gem hunters call the shiny speck rule. Look down at small pebbles, especially ones half embedded in dirt. Use sunlight to your advantage. Tilt your head. Gemstones like peridot, zircon, and even rough diamonds refract light. They won't gleam like cut gems, but they will flash in unnatural ways. Sharp edges, glassy corners, or translucent bodies that the rest of the ground just doesn't have. Quartz is often mistaken for a gemstone, but once you start seeing real gems, you'll notice. Their light behaves differently. They glow from within, not just reflect on the surface. And where you see one speck, chances are more hiding just beneath. Now let's reveal a trick most pros guard like gold. Old, dry riverbeds, especially ones with pockets of milky quartz. Here's why this matters. Riverbeds once carried gemstones downstream. Over time, the lighter gravel washes away, but the denser gemstones settle between quartz patches. Quartz is often a signal of hydrothermal activity, and many gemstones like amethyst, topaz, and aquamarine form in exactly those environments. Find a dry stream with visible quartz outcrops and dig just to the sides of those white clusters. That's where the water slows and gems sink. Use a rock hammer to break open small quartz chunks. Sometimes you'll find crystals embedded inside. But be careful. If the quartz looks fractured with rusty veins or small black specks inside, it might be hiding something valuable. Another underrated trick, look for color contrasts in the soil especially red clay meeting black or brown streaks. This color difference isn't random. It often signals a change in mineral content underground. Red clay indicates iron oxide, while black soil might hold manganese, magnetite, or even garnet-bearing schist. Where two soil types meet, they often act like a filter, allowing heavier minerals to accumulate at the boundary. Many gem veins run along fractures, and these fractures often trap minerals where clays meet. So if you're walking and notice sudden changes in soil color, stop. Dig along the transition. That's where hidden gemstone pockets form. Believe it or not, plants know where the gems are. Not directly, of course, but some trees and bushes only grow in mineral-rich soil. In gemstone regions, trees like juniper, tamarisk, and desert willows are often found growing over gem-bearing soils. Why? Because they're deep-rooted and their roots stretch into fractured bedrock, often the same bedrock that hides topaz, garnet, or even opal veins. If you're in a rocky area and spot clusters of these plants growing in a line, follow them. They're often tracking the exact path of a mineral vein underground. And where the roots go, you should dig. Here's a gemstone secret so strange, it sounds made up, but it's real. Ants, certain ant species dig deep underground and pile up small pebbles at their nest entrances. In areas known for garnet, zircon, or small peridots, these tiny creatures can unknowingly mine for you. People have found rough gemstones sitting at the mouth of anthills. Why? 
because ants bring them up from deeper layers while building their tunnels. So next time you're exploring, don't ignore ant hills, inspect them. The gems are sometimes already sorted, just waiting to be picked up. Now let's get geological. In nature, gemstones often form along fault lines, where rocks fracture, shift and pressurize over thousands of years. These natural faults act as pipelines for heat and mineral-rich fluids. And what comes from pressure and mineral flow? Crystals. Search for jagged rock faces where the pattern looks broken, almost like a lightning bolt scar on the stone. These break lines are where you should dig. Gems like emeralds, tourmalines, and even sapphire veins form along them. Chisel carefully. Gems often hide in the seams, not the smooth parts. Before putting shovel to soil, listen to nature. Feel the ground. Is it unusually hard? Does it sound hollow when tapped? Both can indicate veins or pockets underneath. Don't dig blindly, dig with purpose. Let nature's signs guide your hand. Because out here, the earth talks. And if you know how to listen, you'll always know where to dig first. So you've scouted the slope base. You've examined dry riverbeds, studied plant growth, soil color, and even followed the trail of ants. Now it's time to take your hunt to a level that few beginners even know about using geological time itself as your ally. Let's go deeper. Next up, temporary water pools. In seasonal or semi-arid areas, flash floods and brief water flow events create small catchment zones. These aren't rivers, but shallow, muddy areas where water once gathered and slowed down. What does that mean for you? Where the water slows, sediment drops, and that sediment can carry dense gemstones. These drop zones look like Shiny patches of silt, slightly darker soil in depressions, tightly packed sand with glittery flakes. Use a small pick or your hand. Go shallow at first. Gently loosen the material and look for heavier fragments at the bottom, like topaz, zircon, or even rough diamond octahedrons. They fall out of flow when the current dies. And guess what? So do opportunities. Here's a trick straight from the field that requires no tools, just your ears. If you suspect a rock has something inside, especially quartz nodules, geodes, or conglomerate clusters, tap it gently with a small metal rod or another stone. Listen for a dull thud versus a sharp ping. A dull sound usually means the rock is solid. A slightly hollow or higher tone might signal a pocket of crystal inside. Pros use this to locate agate and amethyst centers, especially in volcanic rock regions. You're not guessing. You're using sound waves to map the unseen. In cooler regions or highland zones, gemstones and heavy minerals are often pushed upwards by a seasonal process called frost heaving. Here's what happens. Water enters small cracks and freezes. As it expands, it pushes rocks, including gemstones, toward the surface, especially heavier ones. This is why, after snow melt, you sometimes find peridots, sapphires, or garnets on trails or bare patches of land. Look for small surface stones that look out of place, shiny specks embedded in root lines, cracked ground with quartz inclusions. It's nature giving you a second chance, pushing the treasure back toward your shovel. When all else fails, go volcanic. Many gemstones are born in volcanic environments. Heat, pressure, and mineral-rich gases are the trifecta for creation. If you're walking across dry land with black, crumbly rock scoria, or pumice fragments, yellow-red, dusty layers, you're likely standing on ancient volcanic soil. Gemstones like spinel, peridot, topaz, zircon, and even diamonds can appear in these zones, especially if kimberlite pipes or basalt flows once existed nearby. Dig along where the volcanic dust meets compacted stone. That's the collision point of past eruptions and pressure zones, a gold mine for rough crystals. This might be the most important thing you'll ever learn. Gemstones don't travel far. Unlike lighter rocks or sand, gemstones are dense. That means once they fall out of flowing water, they don't move much. So if you find a piece of rough gem material, even a small one, dig in that exact spot. You might be standing right above the vein or the primary deposit. And if you find two pieces within a few feet of each other, that's not coincidence. That's the jackpot's whisper. You don't need a metal detector. You don't need an expensive expedition. You don't even need luck. What you need is awareness. 
Gemstones don't scream, but they speak. Through soil changes, rock fractures, water deposits, plant patterns, and ancient erosion pathways, you've just learned the easiest trick in the field, where to dig first, by letting nature guide you. Because out here, the wise don't dig harder, they dig smarter. And on the day you brush dirt from your first glimmering crystal, when the sunlight hits it and your hands tremble, you'll remember this. The treasure was always there. You just learned how to find it. If you love this journey into the misunderstood world of ugly gemstones, hit subscribe, because the next gemstone hiding in plain sight might just change everything you thought you knew.